Hello and welcome. To carry out any stress analysis, we need to specify the loads acting on the structure to study the stress pattern along with the appropriate supports. Among all the loading conditions, the most used are force and pressure. By definition, pressure is force per unit area, thus relating pressure with force. As a new user, it can often be confusing to decide which loading condition to use for a given scenario. For example, in this case of bricks resting on a table, if we want to analyze the stress pattern on the table, we can replace the bricks weight with a loading condition. So would you use force or pressure to represent the weight of the bricks? In this video, we will be focusing on clarifying the difference between force and pressure in terms of total magnitude and direction of application. Ready? Let's get started. For any stress analysis, the engineers will have to specify appropriate boundary conditions to get the expected results. The structure should be constrained with appropriate supports and the excitations are provided via loads. There are different types of loads available in ANSYS Mechanical. Gravity and other inertial loads as well as thermal loads reflect the influence of the environment on our structure and are covered in separate lessons in more detail. We will focus on loads that are associated with forces exerted on our structure. A force is used to define the effect on our structure from other parts that are not modeled geometrically. It can be considered as the total impact of one object on another. For example, the force exerted by a rider on the pedal when cycling can be represented with the force load on the pedal without needing to model the rider's foot. On the other hand, pressure is often used to define the force exerted per unit area by a fluid on a structure. For example, the pressure exerted by the reservoir water on the inner walls of the dam. We usually can measure the pressure of a fluid and it tends to act uniformly. So that is why we use a pressure load for such loading conditions. While we may think of pressure and force to be the same, just a difference of a factor of the area. The real difference between force and pressure is how the solver handles the definition of direction and magnitude. When we talk about the direction of application, force is specified in a given direction and it always maintains the direction of application throughout the simulation. For a fluid exerting pressure on the structure, the shear or tangential terms may be neglected. So we can assume that the pressure only acts in the normal direction to the face, even if the structure deforms. So that is why pressure load always acts normal to the face rather than maintaining a particular direction. However, Note that we also have the option to define the pressure along a constant direction to make it act like a force. Although this is less commonly used and not the default behavior of pressure loads. Let us consider a simple case of a slender cantilever beam. It is fixed at one end and on the other hand, we have a small face to apply load. For the first case, we will apply force at the tip and for the second case, we will apply pressure. Though our focus is on small deflection simulations, for this course, we will use large deflection analysis here to differentiate these cases visually. For the case of force, we can see that force reaction at the supports is constant throughout the analysis. It is equal and opposite to applied force. Now, for the case of pressure, we can see that the force reaction at the base changes its direction to the analysis. Eventually, the direction of the force reaction in this case remains equal and opposite to the applied pressure which acts in the normal direction of the phase to the simulation. Another important differentiating item between the force and the pressure is the meaning of the sign of the loads. So when we apply pressure with the positive sign, it acts into the surface, whereas 
for the pressure acting away from the surface we need to use negative sign but when using the force it acts as per the direction defined by the vector or the xyz components hence the sign is decided by the vector direction or xyz component sign and not by the surface normal we also have an option to use existing geometry to define the vector direction for both types of loads but it is important to note if the reference geometry is modified the loading direction defined before the modification will not be updated it does not create any associative loading direction with respect to the geometry this feature is for the user's convenience only so if we want the loading direction to be updated as per the modified reference geometry we will have to rescope it appropriately in many cases the geometry may be not aligned with the global coordinate system in such cases we can create a local coordinate system and then define the loading direction based on the local coordinate system components when creating the local coordinate system a cylindrical coordinate system does not make sense in the context of loads since we don't want to apply load per radian so we can only use local cartesian coordinate systems after discussing the difference between force and pressure based on the direction of the load application let us understand the difference based on the magnitude of the load it is not unusual for analysts to perform a simulation on a given design then update the simulation for a different geometric design in such cases after refreshing the geometry in a ansys mechanical any force load maintains the magnitude of the applied force however for pressure definition the pressure value is maintained but if the area of the scope geometry has changed the total force magnitude will change similarly consider a large deflection analysis if the size of the area on which a force is applied changes due to deformation the total force remains constant however for pressure loads if the area deforms and expands this causes the resultant force magnitude to change we also need to be careful when scoping the force to more than one surface we always specify the total force the total force is distributed in an area weighted manner on multiple surfaces let us consider this example we are applying 20 newton force to two surfaces one with 50 mm square and second with 150 mm square in this case it will apply 5 newton and 50 newton force to each surface respectively and not 20 newton to each surface for pressure it is defined by force per area so all the scoped surfaces will have the same pressure value but the actual force will depend on the size of the area let us now see an example to understand two types of loads we will model a door handle on which a force of 40 newton is applied in the horizontal direction this force is assumed to be distributed uniformly over three surfaces of the handle should we use a pressure boundary condition or a force boundary condition are the two cases equivalent let's find the answers to these questions we are now in ansys workbench and we have a static structural system a in our project double click on the model cell to open ansys mechanical the geometry has been imported and structural steel has been assigned as the material a mesh is also been generated we are using metric mm kg newton unit system here the handle is attached firmly to the door at its top end so let's apply a fixed support boundary condition to the top end right click on static structure insert fixed support make sure the face select option is active and select the surface on the top end of the handle and click apply next we have to apply a force of 40 newton on the three surfaces of the handle shown here since this force is distributed uniformly over a certain area the question before us is 
whether we want to use a force boundary condition or a pressure boundary condition. Let us first use a force boundary condition. Right click on static structure, insert force. The force is applied on these three selected surfaces. Set the defined by to components and specify the y component to be 40 Newton. Now let's insert some results that we want to see after solving this system. Right click on solution, insert deformation total. Let's also add the equivalent stress. So right click on solution, insert stress equivalent. Let's solve this system by right clicking on the solution and choosing solve. Now let's see if we get similar results when we use a pressure boundary condition instead of force. Go back to the ANSYS workbench window. Drag and drop a static structural system to the model cell of system A. System A and system B now share the geometry, the engineering data and the model information, which in this case means that they share the mesh. Now go back to the mechanical window. We again need to apply a fixed support boundary condition to the top end of the handle. An easy way to do this is to simply drag and drop the fixed support boundary condition from system A to system B. For this system, we apply a pressure boundary condition instead of a force boundary condition. To calculate the pressure equivalent to a force of 40 Newton, we need to know the area over which the force is applied. To get this, make sure that face select option is active and select the three faces over which the force is distributed. The area of the three faces can be seen in the bottom right corner. We can now calculate the equivalent pressure equal to force divided by the area. Right click on static structural 2 for system B, insert pressure. Pressure is applied over the three selected faces and by default the defined by is set to normal to, meaning that the pressure will act normal to the surface of the geometry. Define the magnitude of the pressure as shown. Let's insert total deformation and equivalent stress under the solution. Now let's solve this system. Now that we have solved both the systems, let's compare the results. To view the results for the two systems side by side, let's open up two viewports. Go to display in the top ribbon, viewports, two vertical viewports. Let's also make sure the sync viewport option is active. Activate the first viewport by clicking anywhere within the viewport and then click on total deformation of system A. Next, activate the second viewport by clicking on it and then click on total deformation of system B. We see that the results are different in the two cases. Now, let's compare the equivalent stress between the two cases. We again observe that the results don't match with each other. Next, let's compare the reaction force obtained in the two cases. To calculate the reaction force, simply drag and drop the fixed support boundary condition in system A to the solution to create the force reaction object. We see that the reaction force in system A acts in the negative y direction and its magnitude is equal to the expected reaction force of 40 Newton. We repeat this procedure for system B. In this case, the reaction force acts in the negative y direction but its magnitude is less than the expected 40 Newton. Why does this happen? Well, if we look at the pressure boundary condition carefully, we see that we have set the defined by to normal to, meaning that the pressure acts normal to the scope surface. Notice that two of the scope surfaces are curved, meaning that the pressure applied on these two surfaces has a non-zero component 
in the global x direction thus when we use the pressure boundary condition not all of the pressure applied acts in the global y direction so when we use the pressure boundary condition with the current option of defined by normal 2 it is not equivalent to a force boundary condition defined by components so how do we make it equivalent to system a we can do this by changing the defined by to components and setting the y component to the magnitude as shown here solve this system now when we check the reaction force for system b we see that it is equal to the expected force of 40 newton and it acts in the negative y direction as expected we also observe that equivalent stress distribution is the same for the two systems thus with this set of options for a small deflection analysis the pressure boundary condition becomes equivalent to the force boundary condition so let's summarize the key learning points in 3d analysis force and pressure loads are related to each other the major difference between force and pressure is how it is applied to the system the force is the total force exerted by one object on another whereas the pressure is the physical quantity of force spread over a certain area when applying force and pressure loads think about the total magnitude of the load and the direction of application users can select either force or pressure is a way to excite or load the model however one might be easier to use and more accurate than the other generally speaking the parts in our cad geometry that exert forces may be represented with a force in a given direction on the other hand any fluid gas or liquid exerting force on a structure is usually represented with a pressure loading assuming no shear forces are generated by the fluid as they cannot carry any shear loads i hope you found this video informative to understand the difference between forces and pressures don't forget to visit courses.ansys.com to discover more useful courses Thank you.